Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the place where we talk about instruments. There is one that has 58 strings and we're gonna talk about that. Roll that b-roll. Alright, so this is an instrument chances are you've never seen before. Maybe you have. Um, there are some mainstream uh, artists that have used it in their stuff. It's not very common anymore. There was a guy named Rich Mullins back in the early 2000s that used it a lot. Maybe you've heard of him. But this is called the Hammered Dulcimer. Um, there are different kinds of dulcimers that have existed over time. They look different. This one is named such because it is hammered with these little mallets on the strings. Um, there are 58 different strings that are on this, pulling across two bridges here, and with that it gives you a collection of notes on this side here, right here, and right here. Uh, and that gives you a wide range of different keys that you can play in. Um, what's really cool about the hammer dulcimer is it's, it's like a percussive and melodic kind of instrument at the same time, and uh, it makes for some really cool sounds. Uh, now these are called the mallets, they're what you use to play the strings. Uh, you can get two different sounds from them. Um, this side here has more of a, a leather or a fabric on top, which gives it a softer sound, which actually, uh, it sounds a lot like a piano in its sound. Um, on the other side, though, it's just the, the wood, and that gives it more of a sharper sound, maybe like a harpsichord if you've heard one of those, uh, and that sounds more like this. And uh, that's what I've most commonly used. It gives it a really um, energetic sound when you're using it in practice. The hammer dulcimer has a somewhat unique origin, actually, so uh, I'm going to tell you about that for a little bit. So just uh, you know, sit back and enjoy. The word dulcimer comes from the old French word dulcimer, which comes from the Latin phrase dulce melos, which means sweet melody. The hammer dulcimer dates back to around 900 AD in the Middle East and was similar to an ancient instrument called the psaltery. From there it spread through North America and Europe after that. It could be discovered in many different places such as France, England, Italy, Germany, Spain, and the Netherlands during the Middle Ages. Fun fact, it was commonly believed that the dulcimer was in fact as old as Bible times, as the Bible makes reference to the dulcimer. In Daniel chapter 3, it says that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. However, according to the Smithsonian Institution, the word in the King James Version for dulcimer is actually a mistranslation for the Greek word symphonia, and actually refers to a type of bagpipe used at the time. Still, the dulcimer is old and has had a presence in many countries. Although it existed in many different countries, each people group insisted on calling it by a different name, and thus it has many names such as a santur, timpanan, hakbret, cymbalan, santuri, and yang chin. Welcome back. Alright, so there's a bunch of different places that you can start to play depending on the key that you're in, and you can see that by looking at uh, each spot here on the bridge, there's different white indicators that show that that is the start of a new uh, key or a new scale. Um, so down here, you've got your D scale, and you can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and it starts over on the next, uh, the next white indicator over here. So then coming up here, that'd be your G scale, and so on. If you were to come over here, there's another D scale. So depending on the key you're in, you're going to be playing at a different spot on the hammer dulcimer, and um, the white spots kind of indicate where you're going to be, which makes it really helpful and leaves room for a lot of creativity inside of that uh, because you know your window that you can work with when you're playing in a specific key, and you can do chordal stuff like you know, something like that. Also, maybe if you've heard uh, the song that I did called Time, that had a lead on the hammer dulcimer, and it was in A minor, so I took C, which was right here, and I brought it down two half steps, so I was in A minor, and then I played the lead, which sounded like this. So 
so yeah, it's a, it's a really, like I said, it's a percussive melodic instrument. It makes it, uh, makes for a really cool sound. Each string is doubled up here, which is great because they just kind of wanted to make life more difficult for tuning. It takes about a half hour to tune this bad boy. So when I first heard about the hammer dulcimer, I was really interested. I was like, I gotta have one of these. I gotta learn how to play it, but I don't, I don't know where I'm gonna find it. I, I had no idea. That's not the kind of thing where you could just be like, Amazon. I don't think, but I didn't feel comfortable mail ordering this kind of thing anyway, since it's pretty fragile. So I was like, I don't know where I'm gonna find this in suburban Illinois. Um, so I did some looking around. I actually got lucky and got it from a friend of mine uh, that just happened to have one. So that was cool. Uh, but if you're looking for a, a way for you to get yours and you're looking for a, a budget system, uh, they can tend to range between $500 and $4,000. So they can, they can get pretty pricey. Um, like I said, I got this from a friend, so I got it for, for a good deal. This is cool. We could, we could totally, I don't know how I feel about that, though. <laughs> <laughs> we could totally, no. <laughs> I mean, like, the 31 subscriber base is, like, already kind of pushing my intensity, man. I mean, we only have, like, 41 likes on Instagram, so. Oh, hey, that is, that is a positive 41 it likes, is. though.